What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the My Gardener channel. In today's episode, we're back out in the garden. The birds are chirping as you can probably hear and uh, the skies are blue. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. So hopefully you guys are having an amazing day wherever you're at. But uh, it's just a great day to be out in the garden today. And so we're gonna be talking about the idea of subsurface watering. What is it and how can it make an incredible difference in your garden? Let's go. So what is subsurface watering? Well, simply put, subsurface watering is the process of irrigating your crops below the soil surface. Now, why would you wanna do that? Why would you wanna water your plants below the soil? Well, simply put, you're gonna have incredible benefits in not only water reduction, but also weed reduction. You see, when you water below the soil surface, you're watering right where the plant's roots are. You see, roots aren't on the soil surface and they're not up in the air, they're below the soil. And so it makes common sense to water where the roots are. Not only that, but you're gonna be watering where weed seeds aren't. If you think about where weed seeds are, typically if you have a dandelion that goes to seed or any other weed seed, the weed seeds blow throughout the air and they land on the soil surface. They find bare soil. And then once they find bare soil, they need water as the catalyst to start growing. And so if you can keep water below the soil surface, you can essentially reduce your weeding as well. So not only are you going to be reducing your water, but you're also gonna be reducing your weeding. And if you look at the two most kind of arduous and time consuming tasks in the garden, for me at least, it's weeding and watering. And that's why I love subsurface watering. So when it comes to subsoil watering, there's three common methods that gardeners will use. In fact, in our garden, we use two of those methods. So let's talk about them. So the first method of subsoil watering that we utilize here in the garden is known as core gardening. Now, if you've been watching this channel for any length of time, you'll know that I absolutely love core gardening. The reason why is because you can dig a trench that's about eight inches wide by about 10 inches deep and pack it full of organic material. We utilize straw. Straw is a really readily available resource around here. It's organic, it's, uh, it's um, an organic material, so it breaks down, creates compost and food for your garden. It also holds onto water very well. And the fact that it's relatively inexpensive. And so we utilize that, but you can also utilize things like grass clippings, leaf litter and whatnot, anything organic to basically pack the trench full of organic material and then you cover it up. And what happens is that packed in core of organic material acts as a sponge. And what it does is it holds onto water so that during dry periods, the drier soil around the core actually obtains water from the core. It's known as capillary action. You can actually see this in work. If you take a cup of water and dip a napkin into it, watch water move up the napkin. It actually defies gravity. The same exact thing happens in your beds with capillary action. Water will naturally wanna create what's called equilibrium. And that's basically creating a balance between wetter areas and drier areas. And so in your bed, you're using that core to create equilibrium between your plants. Now the core will over time break down. It does end up creating compost and organic material for your plants, which is great, but you do have to replace that core every single year. We do it in the spring before we plant. We basically just dig the trench, put down the core, bury it back up, and then we're ready to plant. Now there's a second method of subsurface watering that is uh, basically always in the soil, and it's something known as subsurface drip irrigation. Now, people in the desert have been using this, and a lot of farmers will use this because you can cover a large area of land, and uh, it allows you to basically water below the surface basically the same way that you would with drip irrigation on the soil surface, only it's drip irrigation that's been buried. Now, there's a lot of technology that goes into this. It's very expensive, and it's usually utilized for large, uh, you know, large swaths of land, but you know, it is available to home gardeners as well. And basically the idea is the same exact process as drip irrigation, only that you're using plastic PVC and stuff like that. You hook it up to your water and it basically jets water into the soil, the, the soil surrounding your plants. And then that water will then wick into drier areas due to capillary action. Same exact process as core gardening, only it's a little bit more modernized. It is a lot more expensive and um, basically, but you know, still same process applies. All right, and that brings me to my third and final method of subsurface watering, and also the sponsor of today's episode, Grow Oya. So we've been using Grow Oyas for the past probably seven, eight years in our garden in different applications. One application that we've been using our Oya is actually in our Mediterranean herb garden. Now, what is an Oya? This is an Oya. Now, what is an Oya? Well, an Oya is an unglazed clay pot. And in fact, the technology is not new at all. It's been used for thousands of years. 
The idea is that this pot here holds on to water. Pot, vase, <laughs> it's a bulb of water, and it basically acts as a water reservoir below the soil. And it's unglazed clay. And the awesome thing behind unglazed clay is the fact that it's very, very porous. If you pour water in here, what you'll notice is that because the outside is much drier than the inside, which has the water, the capillary action, as we talked about, will pull the water from the inside of the pot to the outside of the pot. And what that will do is it'll slowly irrigate all the plants around it and the surrounding soil. So it's a very, very slow, ancient form of drip irrigation, if you will. And I love it because of the fact that this is a really easy thing to use in things like containers, indoor house plants. I absolutely love it. And it works exactly the same way and has the exact same application as say something like core gardening does on you know a much more small and portable level. And I love this. Now, the other thing with this is the fact that Grow Oya has produced probably some of the finest products that I've, uh, that I've really come across when it comes to Oyas. I've used many and I absolutely love Grow Oya, which is why I <laughs> was happy when they asked to sponsor an episode. But, uh, which by the way, thank you Grow Oya, I appreciate it. But um, they actually have different sizes as well and they've modernized the Oya. So not only do you have the unglazed clay bulb here, but you also have something like a lid, which helps to keep debris, bugs, and other junk out of the, the water so it keeps your pots cleaner. But also they had different sizes, which is awesome. This is the small size. I have the medium size in this Mediterranean herb garden, which we'll talk about why I love having it here in a second. And then they also have a large, which is huge. This is absolutely insane. So different sizes for diff different applications, which is awesome. Gives you a lot of versatility. But the reason why I have this Grow Oya Oya in my uh, Mediterranean herb garden here is because Mediterranean herbs like a nice arid environment. They don't like to be overwatered at all. And that is one of the benefits to using an Oya is it is nearly impossible to overwater with the Oya. And that's because Oyas only let out as much water as their environment calls for. It's like a thermostat in your house, basically. If your house is already 70 degrees and your thermostat is set to 70 degrees, it doesn't turn on. And so there's no switch on this. There's no, no electricity but it uses basically a switch, which is moisture regulation. And so if it is damper on the outside than it is on the inside, like let's say it just got a bunch of rain, well, there's not gonna be water, it's not gonna call for water to leave the Oya. So water will just stay inside the pot. But if it dries out and it reaches a point that says there's water needed, it'll take the water from the pot and move it to the outside where it's needed. And it creates that equilibrium, which is awesome. And it allows you just to save so much water, but it also basically makes it impossible to overwater your crops. And so something like a Mediterranean plant like this rosemary or basil, uh, sage, thyme, uh, or sorry, this is sage, things like rosemary, thyme, basil, almost impossible to overwater using an Oya but very, very easy to overwater just using like a hand watering method. So um, it's something that I've definitely used, absolutely love, and I appreciate Grow Oya for sponsoring this episode and helping uh, create this free content for people to, uh, to learn more about gardening and just give you more options on how to garden easier and garden smarter. So with that being said, those are three different methods of subsurface watering. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. I really do hope that you uh, enjoyed. And also, thank you so much, Grow Oya, for sponsoring this episode. I'll have links to their stuff in the description box down below if you wanna check them out. I'm gonna take this inside so it doesn't freeze and break, because that will happen. Wanna make sure that you take them out at the uh, end of the season, store them inside, somewhere where it's dry, not freezing temperatures, because uh, water will expand and these will hold water in the clay because of their, their porosity. So. Um, quick little note there. But as always, guys, take care. Grumpy Girl Home. We'll talk to you guys later. See ya.